Hey guys, welcome back for another episode. I am Kate Bowman. It feels like forever since I have recorded a video. I mean, I record one every month, but I think the last one, it was still technically late, late December, super early January, because I'm pretty sure I took the tree down in the last video. So it has been a while since I have turned this on. Things have been super busy, yet at the same time, they haven't been all that busy at all. And I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but basically I am back writing again. And so writing takes up a huge chunk of my time. When I'm in that space, it kind of becomes writing time and taking care of my family time. But right now we also have tiny house stuff going on. Things are getting pretty exciting with the tiny house. Um, our builder contacted us, was it last week I think? Maybe? Yeah, I think it was last week. They have our trailer. Our custom made trailer has been delivered to the build site and they have already got our flooring going on. We have a few roofing design decisions to make and then it's gonna go up pretty fast from there. We are actually flying out to California in a couple weeks to check on the build and just kind of, uh, I don't exactly remember where we'll be at in the build when we get there, but basically we kind of just need to make sure that things are where we want them to be because because basically from that point forward, there is no turning back in regards to design and the way things are laid out. So we're super excited about that. But in the meantime, we are just right on the cusp of March and this house is gonna be ready in late June. So time is starting to get tight. And no, we still don't have a place to put this tiny house. This has been a lesson in frustration, but also faith and knowing that everything is going to work out, everything is going to fall into place. But for now, we have been saying goodbye to things left and right. Anything that is not something that we know we just absolutely need to come with us, we've said goodbye to it. Right over here, we used to have a big huge like hutch slash buffet that actually sold gosh maybe like a month ago i honestly i don't even remember well in between the last video basically because in the last video i was dusting that but anyway so we said goodbye to that and so even though it's been like a month since that happened i am just now getting around to packing the, up the things that we don't necessarily need right this minute that's what happens when I start writing. Unless it is an absolute necessity, it just doesn't happen. And I have to say that as exciting as it has been to let so many things go, okay, let's actually back that up. It's exciting now to let so many things go. And the funny thing is, is that, you know, I have wanted to do tiny house living for years, I think maybe like five years now. And so when we got to this point where it was, you know, we've been minimizing for years, we've just been saying goodbye to so many things, but then we got to the furniture and I was getting so hung up on the furniture and I couldn't figure out why, what is it about this furniture, Kate? Because obviously this furniture is not gonna fit in a tiny house. And quite frankly, nor do I necessarily want it to. And so I really had to do some digging into figuring out like, why couldn't I let this stuff go? So I did some journaling on it and my brain is always busy, just well, it's always just going. I came to the conclusion that letting it go was kind of about fear and scarcity. You know, I grew up poor and even well into adulthood, we were always robbing Peter to pay Paul and just doing whatever we had to do to make ends meet. You know, I worked as a paraprofessional, my husband is a teacher, so not much money going on there. You know, he would announce games. He was about to start mowing the lawn at the stadium. He was a soccer coach, you know, just whatever we could do to just bring in extra money money and it's not like we were living like a high lifestyle by any means but so anyway you know I ended up I started writing and by some sort of just miracle I just I don't really know how else to describe it like the books they just took off I had launched the first three books in I think it was October of 2012 and like the next day they were bestsellers on Amazon and so our entire life just kind of it just changed and so it was the first time ever that I knew what it felt like to have financial freedom and just having just so much money coming coming into our home. It was such a blessing, but it was also, it came with so many learning curves. You know, we ended up moving to this very posh neighborhood in North Carolina, it was a very exclusive, big, huge house. And so it was all of these things that I thought I wanted and that were gonna make me happy. So, you know, we have this 
big huge house and of course you've got to fill up this big huge house with furniture it was a 3,000 square foot open concept house so upstairs downstairs but everything was very open downstairs we needed this like big chunky furniture to kind of just fill the space well and so when we went to the furniture store it just felt so amazing to be able to go into the store and be like I'll take that and I'll take that and I'll take that and just it didn't matter it didn't matter how much it cost and that just felt exhilarating and so what I'm recognizing now is so much of these things that we still have are from that time in my life. You know, I was at the top of my game. My books were just selling incredibly well. And it was just, I still sometimes am taken aback by the way things were. Like, it's just, it's indescribable to A, not even know that you know how to write. B, you work your butt off to learn how to write. You get your, you put your books up on sale and bam, they just take off. It was... I don't even, I don't even know. Like I still don't even know. Even 10 years later, I still don't know. But it is 10 years later and I have significantly cut back on my writing. You know, when you are saying yes to one thing, you are saying no to something else. And in order to achieve the type of success that I'd had, it was 16 hours a day, 18 hours a day in front of a computer writing a story. And that wasn't even, that wasn't the business side, the marketing side, it was just the story writing. And so all of that success was coming at a cost. And that cost was my family. I wasn't spending as much time with my children as I should have been spending. You know, just everything was just kind of falling apart. And so I had to make a choice. And quite frankly, it wasn't a hard choice to make. My health was at risk at that point. I was having heart palpitations. My hair was falling out. So I had to choose. I had to make a choice and, and I chose my sanity. <laughs> I chose my sanity. I chose my family. And so now I write sparingly. Um, I write because I don't think I can ever not write. But so that comes with a cost and that cost is that our income has changed significantly and I'm okay with that. But so saying goodbye to this furniture means saying goodbye goodbye to that piece of our life and that piece of our life when I felt very successful. And so saying goodbye to this big junky entertainment center also means saying goodbye to that time in my life when I felt on top of the world and incredibly successful. It's amazing how much emotion and how much stuff we wrap up into our possessions. And so, you know, once I was able to unpack that very complicated thought, it just, it made it okay to say, you know what, that was then, this is now, um, to start something new and to go into this next chapter. It means saying goodbye to what was and saying welcome to what will be. And so saying goodbye to that big old chunky piece of furniture and putting that little thing there actually now just feels so freeing. You know, every time we let something else go, I just feel this weight come off of my shoulders when, you know, 10 years ago, I think it would have been completely different. Like holding on to all the things like somehow I felt like that made me feel safe but now letting everything go it's just it's refreshing it's so refreshing so I'm going to finish packing up these last few things and then I'm going to take you upstairs with me and show you the next thing that we will be saying goodbye to today okay so come on upstairs with me and I will show you what we are getting rid of next this right here this gorgeous bed is leaving today. I absolutely love this bedroom set, but it's super heavy and there's too many pieces to it and it just does not match with the new life that we are trying to create. So our friend is actually buying this set and so she's gonna take it in chunks, which I totally appreciate because <laughs> I have to find spots for all of our stuff. So basically today she is going to take the uh, the sleigh bed and then the two side tables. And so I have mostly minimized my side table, but this right here, that is what is left. So I need, I need to find a solution for that. But anyway, because this is leaving, we are saying hello to our new mattress, which, ooh, hello, a lighting, which I'm super excited about. We just bought this Helix mattress. It's the Lux. So this is one of those mattresses that where you take the quiz and they tell you what bed they think is best for you. And so this is the one that they came up with for us for the last, I don't know, 10 years, basically, since we had our other mattress, I've woken up with lower back pain every single day. You know, we travel semi-regularly and I couldn't help but notice that every time I would sleep in a hotel bed, my back was fine. And then we would come home and I'd sleep in our 
bed and it totally wasn't. So obviously we've got big changes coming anyway, so it's the perfect time for a new mattress. And then this right here is the new frame. It's super, super, super heavy. You know, I watch other tiny home videos and I try and see what some of the things that they have in their homes are. And so you can't just put a mattress on the ground because of like mold and, and things like that. Like you need to have some air circulation underneath it. First, we're going to take the bed apart, the one that's in there. Then we're gonna set up this bed frame and we are going to put the new mattress on it. I don't know if like the mattress has to set for a certain amount of time, but until then, uh, the guys are gone right now and I'm definitely gonna need some help. That mattress is way heavy. So I think I'm just going to get the bedding into the wash for now and hope, 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 hope it is going to fit on this mattress or it's going to be interesting for a couple days until I can get something ordered in. <laughs> but I will show you what we end up with once the new bed is in place. Did you ever stop and think why spend too much time just getting ready? Let me be honest, I don't know a single thing that I haven't done to make you notice me. Let me be real here. When I see you, my heart starts racing, but I don't know if I like this chasing and playing and waiting around. It's a shame that my hands start shaking all of the time when you're around me. But this time, this time, girl, I know what's bothering me. I need somebody to love. Oh, na 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 na. Don't you see what's wrong with me? I need somebody to love. Oh, oh na na. I don't. Okay, so everything is sort of set to rights, although not actually at all. <laughs> As you know, we got the bed frame all put together, which actually was really, really simple. I was a little nervous that maybe there was gonna be like a bent bar or the instructions were not great, but that's okay because it was actually really easy anyway. But so now the mattress is here. It says that it's supposed to like have uh, 24 hours to decompress. So that's not happening because uh, there's no spare bed in this place. But uh, <laughs> I'm going to let it breathe for as long as possible. Possible. and then I will put the sheets and stuff on it and I will be sleeping on this bed tonight but I definitely tweaked my back so I think I am going to end things here for right now and just kind of sit on a heating pad for a few minutes and see if that will help okay so today has been a marathon of moving things all over the place but the new bed is all set up so I will show you that later but right now I am about to make some chocolate chip cookies I just really am craving something sweet and and delicious and comforting. I'm going to make some air fryer chocolate chip cookies. You can just make them in the regular oven as well and they are to die for. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up the batter tonight. I'm going to probably make like three or four cookies for the family and then just put the rest in the fridge and then cover it with some plastic. I will bake the rest tomorrow when I have a little more bandwidth. I'm sure you know, I talk about it often, but I am dairy free. So I'm going to use some refined coconut oil. Refined co coconut oil does not have a coconut taste. And then I've already kind of mixed all of my ingredients together just to kind of make this super fast. Because when you videotape and try to bake at the same time, it tr like triples how long everything takes. So, so that just kind of is going to speed things up for me tonight. But so here we go. I know it's nothing new. It's so good to see you We do this every day And I'm still so amazed by you So hold me tight Alright, 
so that was actually really pretty quick since I got all of the ingredients together. I'm going to do a quick tidy and put the rest of the dough into the fridge and then I will show you the new bed setup for now. Okay, so the bed has been put together for now. Here it is. There are no, no side tables to speak of as of now. So this is definitely a little, little different and it looks really weird in this space, but I think once we're in the tiny house and obviously this room right now is much, much bigger than what, we'll, what we will have for our dimensions. I think this is gonna look really great and really cozy. I just hope it's not too high actually. So we shall see. And then now I'm kind of on the hunt for smallish little side tables and I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do about that. I don't know if I'm just gonna wait until we actually get into the tiny house and figure out what's gonna be functional, but we still do have a bit of time before that actually happens. So I don't know, we'll see what we end up doing. But so I am very much looking forward to trying out this new mattress tonight and I am really hoping to wake up tomorrow morning without a sore back. So I will have to let you know how it goes. So I am back and I washed my hair this morning and I did not straighten it, so you get poofy hair Kate today. Uh, <laughs> if you'll recall last night, I had mixed up that batch of chocolate chip cookies. I got really lazy and I have paid the price for that today. So what I ended up doing is I ended up baking up four cookies and then I told myself if I put the rest of the dough into the fridge with some plastic wrap over it. I'll just let it warm up a tiny bit and then I'll be able to scoop it out. And even as I was saying that, I knew that that was not going to work with the coconut oil. Coconut oil is a blessing in the sense that I cannot have dairy, but at the same time, it can also be a major pain in the butt. So this is the dough and I've baked a couple of batches, but it's kind of like real, it's, it's super crumbly and I, and really, really hard to get out of there. It's like shoveling cookie dough. And then if you look right here, well, these, I kind of overbaked these. They also, they're just, I don't know, the flavor of them just is a little bit off. I'm not even going to share these. Um, typically on a Sunday, if I feel like I wanna bake, I make a couple of cookies for the fam and then I send the rest off to, to school with the hubs so he can share them with his students. But these are not gonna cut the mustard today. So you've, you've just learned a valuable lesson if you ever end up baking cookies with coconut oil that you either have to just bake up the whole batch right away or you need to at least take the dough and make them into balls and then that way when you do if you bake them at a later date they they melt better baking fail they happen sometimes so I'm going to put these into the oven and I will be right back so I thought that I would sit down with one one or two one or two of these chocolate chip cookies and have a cup of tea these are definitely not going to the classroom tomorrow sorry kids next time so I did make a video this morning right when I woke up and I don't know if I'm gonna show it to you. It was kind of a disaster. We kept going in and out of focus and I was like really quiet because I didn't wanna wake up the entire rest of the house. But anyway, so basically I had been trying to tell you about my first night of sleep on the new mattress and I don't know. It was okay. My mind was super busy last night, so I don't know that that's necessarily giving it a fair shake. I knew that I wasn't giving the mattress the 24 hours that you were supposed to give it before you were supposed to lay on it. I was afraid that I was A, ruining it, and then B, it also kind of had like a little bit of like a smell that I could smell through the sheets. It wasn't, it was like a tiny bit chemically, but not really. Like, I don't know how to explain the way that it smelled. I just knew that if I had been able to give it more time that I would have. So like all night long, if I could smell the smell, I would wake up and be like, oh my gosh, what is this smell? You know, is it a good thing that you're sitting here laying all over it? But anyway, <laughs> Jack is also hurt right now. There's a lot of like leftover snow and it keeps getting warmer and then colder, warmer and then colder. And so it's making the snow just like super hard and super icy. And so he slipped on it the other day and he hurt his, I'm not sure if it's his front left or right leg, but anyway, it's kind of hard to tell because he limped so much that I can't really tell which one it is that he's limping on because his gait is so off. But then 
last night he, he started doing this weird thing with his back legs and it was so reminiscent of when bear started having his issues so that definitely has us on edge a little bit his back legs seemed a little bit better today so hopefully it's just because he's probably compensating with his back legs because of his injury so hopefully that's all that that is but anyway this vlog has been a little bit all over the place this month and i apologize for that i kind of feel like i am all over the place this month um mentally and emotionally but i think the biggest takeaway that I know for sure is that I never ever want to own this much stuff again. Each week I keep realizing that even though I think, you know, I think we're doing so well, there's still so much more. So I'm glad that we're doing this now and realizing this now in almost March instead of in June when, you know, when we need to be getting ready to move on from this space. Another thing that I know for sure is that, you know, saying goodbye to the clutter and all the extra, it's really hard. This whole decluttering and simplifying is not so simple. Do you have a space in your home that you want or need to declutter? Let me know in the comments section below. Next month, which is very, very soon, we'll be heading out to California and I should have pictures and videos to finally share with you of where things are at with the tiny house. Thank you so much for spending a part of your day with me and I will see you again soon. Bye.